Hi, City Life family. Um, it's good to be here again. And this is a holy um, week, and it's uh, Sunday today, and it's a, it's a marvelous a resurrection Sunday. Uh, we, we just look really, really look forward um, to what God is going to be doing um, this weekend to a lot of people. You know, around the world there are thousands and thousands of churches now closed down for the very first time and it's quite sad because this Sunday churches would be absolutely packed uh, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And um, we just have to keep praying that God will come in uh, in the next few weeks and take this uh, virus away from us. So I thought today a message of um, reconciliation, a message of collaboration, a message that would help us to understand why uh, the Lord can come in and intercept in our lives. And I want to talk a little bit ultimately this morning about the unleavened bread um, that the Jews talk, um, spoke about and took uh, just before they left Egypt um, and towards the desert into the Promised Land. And I want to start reading um, to you from Exodus, first of all, Exodus chapter 12, and I'm going to just read you a few verses, because this was an instruction given uh, to the Israelites about what they should be doing um, during the time of what we call is the Passover. Another name for the Passover is called the unleveled bread, because of the instructions given almost at the same time as we read this in Exodus chapter 12. And it says this, and ver reading from verse 40, it says, and so this day shall be to you a, 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 memorial, a memorial, and you should keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Uh, you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat the unleavened bread, and on the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats the leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, the person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day there shall be a holy con convocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation for you. No um, manner of work shall be done on them, but that which every one must eat, that only may be prepared by you. So you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, for this same day I will have brought you your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day without your generation as an everlasting ordinance. So it's a really important instruction that God gave um, the people of Israel in terms of the unleavened bread. Now, the, the Holy Week is a very, very important week if we think about the Holy Week itself. Wednesday, and you know, scholars would argue about the days, and, but we're going to keep to the tradition, uh, traditional understandings of the days. Wednesday would often be seen as Spy Wednesday because it was where Judas himself um, betrayed Jesus. And it was the day where they were called coming up towards what we call is Nisan 14. It's a preparation for the Passover, uh, Passover lamb. Thursday would often call, and we call that Monday Thursday, um, because Jesus had the Passover meal with his disciples. And this is actually the Passover before the Passover, because um, Jesus did the Passover. Obviously, he was killed on the day of the Passover. So, um, but on that day uh, that he, he asked, remember Peter and John, to go and prepare. Um, if, you, if you ever read the Gospels, you'll notice that the, there was never a lamb at the table when Jesus was give, giving the Holy Communion, because he was the lamb himself. Later on, Jesus prayed um, um, that his disciples would keep watch in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the Roman soldiers came and arrested him. Then we go on to the chronological order of the, the Friday, um, and this was uh, in the morning, and Jesus stands trial before Pontius Pilate. This was known as Nisan 15, and uh, the next day, and before Pontius Pilate, Jesus was sent to Herod, and then Herod sent him back to Pilate. And then, and then Jesus was then led to Calvary carrying a heavy cross. And the crucifixion was at 9 a.m., um, the third hour as we call it, because the day of the Jews always started at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's why if you look at the uh, biblical calendar, you get sometimes confused because uh, it always starts at 6 a.m. So a day would start uh, during that time. 
and uh, it was there where the car, the, the, um, the, the, the garment of Jesus was, is, is, it was c- c- um, lots were cast for the clothing. Um, and then we n- n- have these events that happened through that time that Jesus was on the cross. And finally he said, it's finished. And he died um, on the ninth hour, which is 3.30 p.m. And there's a reason for that, because he had to die on that time. Uh, because, as you know, the prophecy had indicated, indicated that, uh, that he, his legs would never be broken. Because it was coming to what we call is the high Sabbath day, which was, for the Jews, the Sabbath day uh, was on the Saturday. But I just want to read you also from uh, Leviticus about this unleavened bread. And I just believe, as we look at this unleavened bread, and the unleavened bread obviously was a time when, when they did the Passover, back at the time in, in the book of Exodus, you will find that they put blood around the lintels. But inside, uh, we don't very rarely uh, read this, but uh, obviously they ate the actual animal, the, the, the lamb. They, they ate the lamb, but they also was asked to make bread. And this time they were asked to make it without yeast. It was, it was so that they would hurry. It would be a, a, a picture of them hurrying quickly so that they would be able to leave um, Egypt and go into, towards the promised promise land. And in Leviticus um, 23, 6 to 8, if you want to turn to that, you will read this. It says, On the fifth day of the month of the Lord's festival of unleavened bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread without yeast. And on the first day hold a a, a sacred assembly and do do no regular work. For seven days present a food offering to the Lord. And on the seventh day hold a sacred assembly and and do no regular work. So it was so important. In other words, from the 15th to the 21st, those were the seven days. They were the eight, seven days that were very important. They were told um, they were not to eat any yeast. Uh, they were told not to work during those days. So that's post Passover itself. The month they refer to is, is Nisan, which was normally between March and April, about this time. That's why we have what we call it Easter, but that's, a, that's another sermon in itself. But where a male old lamb was sold and examined and was raised in Bethlehem because all the lambs that were raised often were raised in a place called Bethlehem. Remember Jesus, that's the picture. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and then they were raised in Bethlehem so that they then would be used in Jerusalem as, as, as a sacrifice. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The lamb was killed on the day called Nisan 14, the same day that Jesus was crucified on the cross. You see, all these parallels would come together in terms of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They were very, very important. And then they would have what we call is a holy convocation, uh, a gathering on the 15th, the last day of the feast, till the 21st, which was called from the high Sabbath all the way to the 21st. And on these days the people ceased from labour, spent time meditating on God and the greatness and goodness. The 15th is called the High Sabbath. So although we've got Holy Week coming up, folks, just listen to me very carefully. This week coming up, Monday onwards, this is a time to meditate. This is a time to pray. This is a time to seek God. This is a time to take all, as it says, or take all the yeast out of the house. And we'll we'll see what the symbol of the yeast actually means in a moment. But take all the yeast of the house house and not let anything else disturb or distract or confuse us in the way what in the way which God wants us to go soldiers uh, would often break a person's leg um, before the Sabbath because they nobody could die uh, nobody could be dying on that sub the high Sabbath day everybody had to be buried or thrown into the on, into the pit in those in those days it lasted um, for this time, and uh, leaven came from a symbolic sign of bondage. It comes from a sign of, of sin. It comes from a sign of the world system. And it runs totally opposite. It's a sign of Pharaoh itself. Pharaoh was a, a, an image of Satan um, holding the people back. And God says, I want you to get rid of all that leaven because it's totally opposite to God. 
unleavened bread is, is a symbolized as, as, as almost taken, um, t- taking away the old life and bringing in the new life and ca- coming out of bondage. That is exactly what God wants in this season of COVID-19. He wants people to come out of bondage. And we are in bondage. We're, we're sealed up in our houses. Uh, we can't even communicate. This is, the enemy loves all this stuff. Um, fortunately enough, we've got a media and we got, we got our things of, of social media that we can connect with, but this is that we are almost tied down to our own houses and we cannot actually talk as, as we want to. And, and the enemy loves those kind of things. He loves to break communications between families, friends, um, and, and stop the economy, the proper economy in terms of how the world should function. When we go on to um, chapter 13, as, as you can read right now, chapter 13, um, chapter, um, verses th- chapter 3, verses uh, 7, it says this, it says, Before the feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread could be celebrated, all the leaven was removed from the Hebrew house. This was required a great amount of spring cleaning. That's why during this time, that's exactly what the Jews do. Um, everything was thoroughly washed, everything was thoroughly scrubbed, everything was cleaned, including the, the walls, including the floors, including the furniture, including the, the, the cabinets. Uh, and it's funny because even though we're in this place, time of COVID-19, it's, it's funny how I believe that God is coming into this world and this is a time of purging this world. In other words, purging is almost getting all the dross to the, to the surface. He's, he's, he's putting pushing his, his, his ways forward subtly through this time that the enemy is trying to destroy the people of this land. And what he's doing, he's saying, clean your house, clean your hands, uh, cl- cl- clean those things that you would no- normally never clean. Uh, we've let, th- let them get dirty um, and we've become so complacent in the things that we've done. And yet now it's time, um, the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony to come out and for people to get to know. It's time to have a scrub. So what we call Holy Week, this is when Peter and John was told to prepare the Passover meal just before um, they were about to have what we call is the Holy Communion time. Utensils were used with leaven and were boiled uh, in hot water so they would be cleansed as well. It just reminds me of some of the stuff that is coming out of the news today and you hear in the hospitals, you know, they're, they're, they're cleaning, they're cleansing, they're, they're doing all sorts of things to keep this clean. This Passover time is almost mirrored to the, the time of cleansing and cleaning uh, and it's a picture of where we should be today. Once cl- 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 cleaning was complete, the family would participate in a ceremony called Search for the Leaven. This is what they, they, they started to do as a ceremony. The family would, with the week before, they would go around and they would, would play a game. It was, like, it was almost like a game. The head of the house would search for, by candlelight, diligently through every uh, nook and cranny, looking for hidden leaven. And he would immediately remove it from the house. And that is, I believe, that's what God is telling us right now. This is a time when we should be looking at the stuff that we've allowed um, to fall into the enemy's hands and we should start to say, come on, let's clean our houses out. Let's clean out, metaphorically, let's clean our houses out. Let's clean those things that we have let things come by and we've been so complacent at. Our our level, that that which we used to call a sin in the Bible uh, is, is now become almost normality. And we should say, no, well, we, now we're not going to accept it. We've, we've seen what um, this world has ended up as, as, as almost a, a, a one bit big room that we, uh, in, terms of this, we, in terms that we cannot get out. And we should be looking at it now. Well, we, we, we don't want to be confined. We don't want to be in Egypt. We don't want to be imprisoned. And, and so we need to say, let's clean the house out. Let's get out there and, 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 and let's see those things that, that, that we have allowed. Us, sometimes us as Christians have been complacent and we've allowed things to happen and we have not spoken up. This happened through the Jewish community looking for leaven. 
That's what they did. And it was a game. They would, the family would get together and they just, uh, you know, a few days before, they would go around looking for this bread, uh, leaven, and, and it would be purposely put in each room. So they would start to clean up each room. And it's funny because the instrument they used to use was called, they would use a feather and a brush. And, uh, the, and the, the feather would represent uh, the Holy Spirit. And, and the Holy Spirit would come along and, and, and then they would take this, this leaven, this, this stuff, and, and then, they, then they would brush it out and throw it away and burn it. Uh, and, and that's what they, they did. And I believe that God, the Holy Spirit wants to come into this land and purge us and burn all the rubbish that needs to be burned. We need to pray into that. That is where we are able to celebrate the Passover and the unleavened bread. Celebration, memorial of deliverance from Egypt, bondage, oppression, sorrow, suffering. That is a part of the old life. And we have allowed that old life to come back. And we need to push that old life back um, and let Jesus come in. Jesus fulfilled the feast of the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. And from heaven who had no leaven in him at all. If you read John 3 verse 5. He, in other words, he had no sin in him at all. He's come to purge. And it says in John 3 verse 5, it says this. It says, you know that he was manifested to take away the sin. And in him there is no sin. So Jesus was crucified on what we call is, uh, Nisan 14. Um, but his body was taken down before 6 o'clock in the evening. Between 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., which would begin uh, on the next day on the 15th, which would often be the Sabbath. They used to call it the High Sabbath. We realized that there was a guy called Joseph Arimathea. And I've just I've done a teaching on this um, today called The Burial of Jesus Christ. You can get that on, on, on YouTube. Um, but we realize that Joseph Arimathea and Nicodemus prepared Jesus' body for the burial and placed him in Joseph's tomb. And just in time for Jesus to be buried on the 15th, first day of unleavened bread. Isn't it funny that Jesus was, was buried on that day of the 15th, which was a day of unleavened bread. Jesus was the unleavened bread of God from heaven and he took all our leaven, our sin away and was buried on the same day and Jesus had been celebrating this feast for centuries. So there is a parallel there you can see. He is our unleavened bread. He is the one that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus took our leaven of sin in his spirit and our leaven of sorrow in his soul and our leaven of sickness, disease, death uh, into his body. And he knew no leaven, but became leaven for us. Our world's attitude and sinful ways were buried with him on that cross. That's what we need to understand. The bondage, the oppression, that some of you may be in depression. Some of you may be sorrowful. Some of you may be suffering. Some of you may have lost some family during this time and you're looking for some some consolidation with God and well he, he is the one that you should be searching for but this old life this this life where there's there's, there's been leaven in, in in our in our in our country leaven in the world God says he wants to purge he wants to take away and he wants it back um, where it should be Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were important members of the Jewish uh, Supreme Court. They were part of the Sanhedrin. And they took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen bands with a mixture of mirth, weighing almost about 100 pounds. And the body was wrapped and bandaged tightly from the armpits to the ankles, foot wide, but the face obviously was open so that people could see it. And uh, before he was crucified, Jesus was beaten so badly. The Bible tells us he was beaten so badly. In Isaiah 52, 14, he said he was beaten so badly that his face was disfigured. In other words, you could not recognize him. 
and the stone would have been sealed with the Roman soldier's uh, seal, special seal, seal as, as, in, in terms of what they did traditionally. When we read Ephesians chapter 4, 22, Paul talks about this and he says this, Paul wrote that we believers are, put, are, are to put off, he says, the old leaven of sin that was crucified and buried with Jesus. That's what he says. It says and then he says this, it uses the word put off concerning your former conduct. In other words, to take away that former conduct, that, that old self, the self that fears all the time, the self that is selfish all the time, the self, the, the self that cannot be bothered um, to do the things of God, the self that cannot, cannot be bothered to serve the church. And uh, Paul used the word put off, referring to a person taking off his garment. In other words, taking off that, that leaven, that old self, and putting Jesus Christ on himself, because a garment represented a person. God gave the Feast of Unleavened Bread as a visual aid, showing the Hebrews that they were to be separate from Egypt. That's why the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And how often we have compromised of being a part of the world. We are kind of half leaven and half unleavened. We come to church and we become, uh, you know, unleavened bread. We go into the world on a Monday and we become leavened bread. And we need to, we, we can never compromise. Do you remember what, what, what it says in the book of Revelations to the church of Laodicea? He says, I don't like you to be hot or, or cold. In other words, I, you know, you need to be hot or cold. In other words, um, I don't want you to be lukewarm. Otherwise, he said, I'll spit you out. What, what a graphic illustration of how God does not like us to be people who are sitting on the fence. And there are many of us that just sit on the fence. I pray that once this COVID-19, these restrictions are over and this virus this terrible virus is gone, that it has triggered us in our lives to change and to understand why God himself wants us to be better than we were in, in 2019 and 2018. Yet some of us have fallen short of that. We've spoken about a lot of things, but when it comes really down to, to, the, to, to, to coming to the edge of the cliff, uh, we have so often fallen short of that. So we now know about the Passover, which is and was the first step to our Christian lives. But it does not stop there because the Feast of Unleavened Bread is harder to maintain than just the Passover, which is the blood of the Lamb and Jesus dying. You see, uh, both feasts relates to our conditions and both feasts relates to our, our characters. He was the first fruit of the harvest. And at the table, the best meal of the day is served, at the, always at the table. And at the end of the feast, for about two hours, and the last thing that is eaten is always the unleavened bread that is hidden. What is it in your life? The Father brings it out of it in its hiding place. Some of us have got that leaven hidden away. Some of us think that, you know, um, because... Um, the pastor or people are not looking at you or seeing you. Uh, you can get away with things, but you can never ever get away with God. He, he's, he's watching every move you make, every, every turn you take. He's watching you. He knows everything you do. When you get to the communion table, you see, we have one cup and we often have one cup, which is, which is the wine that represents the blood, the bread which represents the body. Um, but during Jesus' time, there were, there were four cups uh, that they used. And the third cup, you read this in Matthew 26, verses 26. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, and this is my body. Now, what he said was a blessing that has been going for almost 2,000 years. But actually, what he was talking about was the cup the third cup, the redemptive cup, is the cup of redemption, the, the cup that redeems you and redeems me. The prophecy is a, a blessing. You can't bury uh, like a kernel of wheat. The bread is unleavened, means it's pure, 
It's, it's there. It's, 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 it's something that's always going to be there. And, and God says, look, I am the bread of life. And that's why Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, was called uh, simply uh, the house of bread. That's exactly where Jesus came. And he said, I am the bread of life. That's who I am. And no one can come to me except through the Father himself. So it's very, very important that we understand this in our own lives, you see. Communion is not something we just take. It's something that we receive from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You've probably always thought as communion is something that I, I must take. Uh, but let me tell you something, it goes deeper than that. It goes far, far deeper. It's something that I receive. So every time I know the communion is coming around, I, I receive it from Christ. It's not about taking it because it's something that's always, always given, to, to, given back to me. Victory is not about something that I have to go and win. It's something I just have to receive from Christ in, in my own life. And I believe that we're in a, in, in a situation right now where God is simply saying this. He's saying, look, we're in a situation where we know that there are things that we have, are challenged during this time. There are things that we've not reacted correctly during this time. And there are, time, and there are things that we, we should be doing that is supposed to be helping others around us. What an opportunity he's given to us in this holy week, not just on this Sunday, but also in the unleavened time, the, from the 15th, as I said, from the 15th of Nissan to the 21st, this time that we can go to people and talk to people and chat with people and, and bring them to Christ and show them that there is a Christ who is our Saviour, and He is our Saviour, and he is, he is ready to come and, 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 and become the Saviour of many people during this time. We want to pray that many churches that are not functioning at this moment in time, millions of churches that aren't functioning at this time, we pray that once this season is over, uh, that every church in this world that are believers of Christ will be absolutely packed. People will be running to the churches like they've never run before. And, and there'll be such a, such a height of, of knowing about where you will go when, 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 you, when your mortal body dies. This is an exciting time as well as a, a devastating time. They, they're almost working in parallel with each other. It is a paradigm shift. We've, we've had to move, uh, move around and shift around to, to, to accommodate things of our own lives. Some of us have stopped working and, and those kind of things. But it has given us time to think a little bit. It's given us time to ponder a little, to pontificate a little bit. And, and to meditate on God and Christ a little bit. And some of us who aren't working, and, and maybe it, we, we, some of us have stopped working. And, and, and we, it's time for us to pray. And, and to just to seek the God in, in the things that we should be doing. And I just want to say to you right now, and this is a moment, a moment, a season that, you know, we may not come across again. And pray we don't come across it very soon anyway. This is a season to sit back and just for, for ask the Lord to speak into your heart, saying, Lord, I want you to take that leaven, Father, that's in me, and I want you to replace it with that unleavened bread, which is you and that you become a part of me. I cannot live the Christian life, only you can live the Christian life in me, even though I tried so hard. So Father, I just pray, as I, as I pray, Father, for this nation, as I pray for this, this church, as I pray, Father, for everybody that's listening to this message, that this message, Father, will be a message, Father, that will break through, that will cut the edge of, Father, who I am humanly, I pray against my carnality. I pray against my flesh. And I pray, Lord Father, that you will help me to see the, the heavenly side of what is happening with the COVID-19, Lord Father, the, the coronavirus. Help me to see the angle which I can come at, how I can approach people, Lord Father. Use me as an instrument of your will, Lord Father. Use me, Father. We thank you for the communion table. We thank you that we can take uh, the bread that represents the body and the blood that represents the blood, Lord Father 
the wine that represents the blood, Lord Father. So help me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.